So good morning, or good afternoon, or good day. I'd like to welcome everybody to our monthly webinar. Today we're going to hear about the New Jersey YMCA's success in implementing CATCH through the Healthy You program. Sponsored by the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey, Healthy You is being implemented in over 400 New Jersey after-school programs, preschools, and elementary schools throughout the state. My name is Peter Cribb and I'm the National Director for the CATCH program with the Michael and Susan Dell Center for Healthy Living at the University of Texas School of Public Health at the Austin Regional Campus. I'm very excited about today's webinar, but before we get started, I would just like to take care of a little housekeeping. First of all, our webinar today is being recorded and an archive will be made available on the CATCH USA website next week. That's www.catchusa.org. Along with the presentation will also be a PDF of the presentation slides and a very special video. During today's webinar, we encourage you to ask questions via the chat box, which you can access through the control panel at the top of your screen. You can type in your questions at any time, but to keep us on schedule, we'll try to hold off on answering them until the Q&A portion at the end of the presentation. When typing your questions into the chat box, be sure to select the option to send your messages to all the attendees. Next, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the Michael and Susan Bell Center for Health and Living. We are an international leader in conducting research and providing programs that promote healthy living for children, their families and communities. Our work fosters improved health behaviours among youth, influences policy and environmental change to support healthy living, and advances for professional education and community service. Our vision is healthy children in a healthy world. You can find out more about our centre at our work in school health on the website www.msdcentre.org. It's now my pleasure to introduce our special guest for today's webinar, Healthy U Director, Sue Cornell, and Bill Lovett, the Executive Director of the New Jersey Alliance of YMCAs. Sue and Bill are going to present their model for implementation and how the CATCH program has implemented YMCA programming, partnerships, and most of all, the youth and the families they serve. Over to you, Sue. Great, thanks, Pete. We're so excited to be able to share our story and tell you all about our work through the New Jersey State Alliance. Um, today we're going to give you some background on how we got here, why we chose CATCH, and how we in New Jersey. So, Bill, I'm going to hand it off to you, um, and you can share how we got here. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here with all of you speaking about a program we care so much about. So let me just start off with a story, which was that it was six or seven years ago that a YMCA CEO who runs the Metropolitan Y of the Oranges managed to get a meeting with the head of Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, and his goal was to try and get $1,000 for a golf outing. And in the course of that meeting, the CEO of Horizon looked at my friend uh, Rick Gorad and said, you know, I really would have an interest in something a little bit more scalable in the state and working with the Y. And Rick then called me up and we uh, had a meeting with the Horizon Foundation. And we began really what was about an 18 month dialogue about how could we collaborate together to try and achieve scalable social change. And just as background, the New Jersey Alliance of YMCAs is 41 corporate YMCAs throughout the state, serving over 600,000 members and located throughout New Jersey. The Alliance is a 501c3, and the Alliance looks for opportunities to collaborate together to achieve significant social change. The Horizon Foundation of New Jersey is the philanthropic arm of Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, which is New Jersey's largest health insurer with nearly 4 million adults and children insured. So you have two very large organizations that then took a look at how we might work together and where was there an opportunity, especially around children. Next slide, please. And so as we began to think about where 
our sweet spot was around children and Horizon's passion for trying to uh, uh, intervene in what they saw as a very serious crisis of childhood obesity. We came up with the program Healthy You. Next slide, please. And as we started to think about what was most important, obviously we were very concerned about the level of physical activity, but beyond that, and for the why, this was sort of a learning for us, was we needed to become much more engaged in the whole issue around healthy nutrition, healthy eating, and the proliferation of junk food and soda that occurred within our society. And in addition, we all recognize that we had to find a way to not only engage kids, but to engage parents as well. And so as Horizon and the YMCA took a look at where we might want to go, we zeroed in initially on the issue of after school child care because the YMCA was the largest provider in New Jersey with over 400 sites and over 20,000 kids in the program. And at the time, the YMCA of the USA did not have a program that was really designed um, for implementation on a scalable level. But interestingly enough, as we began to look at what kind of program we might want to implement, and Horizon was right at the table with us on this, we became aware of a program called Catch. And obviously, we're all here together today because we're collectively pretty big fans of, of Catch. Next slide, please. And so it was interesting that for Horizon and for the Y, there were certain things that we thought were really critical. First of all, that it had to be evidence-based. Second, that we had to see a structure in place that would allow us on a large level to implement it. And we wanted to make sure that there was the kind of backbone support that would be there for us as we move forward. And so as we did our due diligence and we actually went down to Delaware to watch the program in action, we became convinced that the partnership of the YMCA and Horizon along with the catch leadership was exactly the way we wanted to go. So now let me turn it back to Sue to talk about, you know, here we had this great idea of implementing a very large scalable program but somehow we had to make it work, and we did. And Sue's going to talk to you about that. Great. Thanks, Bill. So next slide, please. So as Bill had mentioned, throughout the state of New Jersey, there's 42 YMCA associations, 85 branches, over 19 counties, and that contributes to 400 entry school sites, 80 early child care centers, and then throughout the course of the grant, 50 partnering elementary schools. And we piloted 10 in our first year, and looking at 15 to 20 in the school year coming up. Next slide, please. So if we look at it as a multi pronged approach, um, that's 400 extra school programs with about 18,000 children, 80 early child care programs with about 5,000, and 50 elementary schools uh, eventually is about 20,000. So that's 40,000 children. And if you look at that plus maybe their families, that's over 160,000 people that we can potentially impact. Here's a uh, little organizational chart for implementation. So the New Jersey YMCA Alliance at the top, along with my position, LDU director, and then the Horizon Foundation. And then we funnel that down to the YMCA Association with their CEOs and YMCA branches, executive directors, and center directors that have all supported the program. Each of these YMCA CEOs or executive directors have um, identified after-school champions, early childhood champions, and a school a YMCA school-based champion. Um, these staff are the main advocates for the program, and in the school program, there's actually a healthy youth team 
made up of uh, a variety of different representatives from the school community. Next slide, please. So I hope you champion is the primary advocate for Healthy You. They direct, they're the direct contact between myself and the YMCA program staff and leadership. They're a member of the School Healthy You team. And that School Healthy You team is basically a principal, a PE teacher, a school nurse, food services representative, classroom teachers, in many instances, parents representatives. Uh, they also provide leadership in following catch implementation, ensuring student surveys and, and SOFIS are completed, and ensure testing a height and weight are completed in the school program. They also complete catch master training and SOFIS training, and they deliver the catch kids club and catch early child care training to all other staff. So here's a model of what a master trainer's duties would look like. Master trainers are, are I'm sorry, master trainers go through a three-day uh, master training academy in which they learn how to deliver and facilitate training to implementers and frontline staff. They'll also perform refresh training to returning staff or new staff that come on board mid-year and booster training. And then in a school-based program where we have fitness grants, many times those master trainers are trained to do youth fitness assessment. Next slide. So once the staff is trained in the program uh, and it's implemented into our program, each year we set a kickoff or recommitment date in early October. And this is a way that we refresh the program to our students and, and recommit to healthy lifestyles in our program. We also send letters home that are provided to parents that communicate the philosophy of the program. We provide a thematic guide similar to the school-based program that rotates teams every four to six weeks. To help you provide, uh, director provides five weekly updates uh, to the master trainers regarding training, evaluation, sharing of program ideas, and themes. Helping you sections in um, individual child care newsletters are also provided for parent information on the cash activities and the nutrient education. Uh, our social media plan, which continues to evolve, uh, provides parent resources uh, and sh help share our success stories. Since every brand is cited different from the population they serve and the resources that are available, autonomy is, is very important. We need to make sure that they have the option of delivering the physical activity and nutrition lessons, uh, how it best uh, work with their own site. However, what we do stress is that they utilize the same philosophy and management that has, uh, has taught us. High participation, no elimination gains, opportunities to learn to be successful, and to have fun being active. Uh, three different rules. We don't use food for reward. We don't use exercise as a punishment. And we don't withhold a child for activity, from activity for behavioral reasons. Except if there's some bullying going. Next slide, please. So in order to make sure we know that this is working and we're making a positive impact, we have an outside evaluator that helps analyze our um, surveys and observations. So we do student surveys to fourth and fifth grade students in our aftercare and our school-based programs. And this assesses behavior in regard to physical activity levels and our nutrition choices. 
Um, it also looks at um, their screen time and family activities. We also deliver the parent survey in the early child care setting that is similar to the, the youth survey but addressed to the parents. So this, which is a system for observing the fitness level during the physical activity period, helps us measure is the efficiency of the physical activity session that our child care people are delivering. Um, if we're using the curriculum and strategies correctly, kids will be active at least 50% or even more of the time that they're doing a physical activity. And if you consider some of the typical games or free time in an after school setting, kids that are naturally active stay active, others will choose sedentary activity. The poor delivery manager will reduce the time involved in the activity because of transition, time, behavior management, etc. We also provide leadership surveys to CEOs, executive directors, and principals. And this helps us gauge the buying and support of the level and the level of environmental of those hires and, and policy changes. Staff surveys help to measure buy-in, identify needs for training, and, uh, and support in other ways. In our, in our school program, we utilize the fitness brand, um, youth fitness assessment and software program, uh, which ultimately provides us with our BMI measurement. And that way we can assess if we're positively impacting the obesity issue in the state. Next slide. So if you look at this graph quickly, um, this is our first field four years in our um, after school program. And down to the left where you see total MVPA, moderate to vigorous physical activity. Uh, in the fall of 2008, we were measuring about 46%. And if you go over to spring in 2012, we were at just about at 64% of the time children were moderate to vigorously physical activity, active during their physical activity sessions. Next slide, please. And on the youth survey, at the 42-month follow-up, we saw significant improvements in increased consumption of fruits and vegetables, reduction in drinking soda and sugary drinks, uh, more students reported watching fewer hours of television during the weekdays, and we saw considerable improvement on what was observed in self-reported um, vigorous and physical activity, playing outside more, and families engaging in physical activity. So our staff, this is what some of what they have said. I've noticed a significant change in what parents are packing for snacks and lunches. And that's from one of our preschool teachers that gauges from the fall of last year over the course of the school year. And parents have reported back that children are identifying go food and scolding parents for what they're putting in their shopping baskets. Um, students in our after school program demonstrate enjoyment in the games and activities. So as we move away from a typical sports game where many children do not find success or enjoying it or don't get involved, when they're involved in catch games, they find opportunities to explore and be successful and really enjoy physical activity and being active. And the staff have commented that it makes leading and conducting games and activities easy and it promotes other core values and positive social interaction. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So some of the keys to our success. Number one is leadership support. Without this, our frontline staff do not have the freedom um, and encouragement to, to implement these strategies in the child care setting. So the YMCA Alliance, and their communication to the local Y is very important. 
by providing updates on the program and um, ongoing training, and also sharing our success stories. The third point is training, 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 uh, and then coaching. Uh, a lot of my job involves visiting the wise across the state and observing their program and having conversation with that Welcome New Champion on any obstacles, challenges, or also sharing their successes and um, items they're putting in place that help better the program. The next one I'd like to talk about is the staff selection. So it gives us a reason to really think a little bit more strategically of how we select staff. We want to make sure that the staff that is delivering this program fully embraces the importance of children being involved in physical activity, eating healthier, and being healthy lifelong. And the next point is the networking and the community engagement. The more our local YMCA's are talking to their community partners, their board of directors, and other partnering organizations about this, this program, it helps to, to spread the footprint and create a community philosophy of wellness. Next slide. So more on the success. Uh, there are MOU agreements and agreements to participate that leadership has signed off on. Um, and the support of local champion of the local champion. Uh, the grant has provided tools and resources to catch training and also full kits to catch curriculum and um, and uh, physical activity equipment. And then we provide and discuss planning and implementation calendars. The kickoff and commitment events has been um, so successful. Last year, our public kickoff gained great public awareness and got media from radio spots um, to newspapers across the state. And again, we're sharing how the YMCA is being a leader in addressing the obesity issues in the state. The evaluation outcomes allows us to gauge our success and also share the positive impact. Next slide, please. So some of our program impacts and benefits. One of the greatest benefits of using CAS is the staff development team. CAS training teaches classroom management skills and leadership traits that improve the quality of our program through strategic and intentional methods. Common and consistent languages, routines, positive reinforcement helps with the effective transition from activities and minimizes behavioral issues. Those that are trained as master trainers gain leadership and facilitation skills. It also provides an opportunity for staff to evaluate their thoughts and attitudes about wellness and many times encourages personal training gains. It encompasses all the YMCA cost driven initiatives of youth development, healthy living, and as a YMCA, it is our social responsibility to be a strong partner and to be in, the, in our community in addressing their obesity issues. Using the CAST curriculum also helps us meet and have the standards. It has also helped the quality and delivery of the physical education in our partnering schools. It has made the New Jersey after school and preschool programs unique in the service that they provide and the skill levels of the staff compared to other child care centers. It has strengthened our relationships and is an avenue of engagement for the YMCA staff and school administration and faculty. And then I'd like to turn it back to Bill to share some of the relationships that have been developed and talk a little bit about sustainability. Thank you, Sue. And um, so for us, one of the great benefits has been 
the kind of new partners that we've brought to the table, both on a macro and a micro level. You know, certainly Horizon has been thrilled and we've sort of become their signature program in terms of their work within the state. And that, that work with Horizon then has led us to a number of different relationships. I won't go through them all for you. You get a sense of the kind of, um, of breadth that you'll see there. But the one that I would say I just would want to highlight is, is the Department of Education and related to that, uh, the AFERD um, linkage where we are working closely using fitness gram to try and put together a system of really measuring what's going on in the schools with regard to uh, the kids that are attending. And it's sort of interesting that um, we have been able to bring partners at the table, to the table, including some in higher education, to help us work with the Department of Education on this project. So it's, many of you at times have heard the term collective impact, where different organizations come together with a singular purpose. And that's really what we're seeing here as we continue to move the project forward. The really interesting thing, and many of you have followed this, uh, over the past few years is more and more we're starting to realize that the that, that the school day, both before school, after school, and the in-school portion of the day, that, that really is the epicenter of so much of the work we have to do to protect kids from childhood obesity and chronic disease. And so as we are thinking about the future with Horizon, one of the really interesting opportunities we have here is by innovating with public schools and finding ways to create partnerships with them to expand the program and to expand the program in a scalable strategy. Our, our vision really for New Jersey is that if we do this webinar in three or four or five years, we won't be talking about 50 public schools that we'll be working with. Our hope is that we're talking about working with three or 400. And one of the strategies that we're gonna be using next year, and Sue would reference this as you sort of looked at that rollout plan, is that initially we started with just, just 10 schools. Next year, I think we're probably gonna have another 20 coming on. But in our final year, we're gonna really focus on the addition of school districts to the program, because we think that our real opportunity is that if we can get it right and then find ways to engage school districts together to move the program forward, then we can really find a strategy that lets us take uh, our work with public schools into a scalable level. And scalable to us means, you know, that that we, we've got three or 400 public schools and that we're really having a broad impact across the state of New Jersey. Now, next slide, please. And so part of what we're thinking a lot about right now is sustainability. And so here are some of the issues that I would just highlight as we look at this and as you all in your own local situations are looking at it. I think that there's a tipping point in our work with YMCA's where the Healthy Youth Program just becomes part of the DNA and that the internal training capacity we develop and the commitment and the reinforcement through the evaluation process of the importance of the program then just starts to embed itself within YMCA's. And so I think we've hit that point with the after school program. And a lot of what we need to do to make sure that that is sustainable really is not as much expense as it is making sure that throughout the organization we are committed to the project and we continue to uh, train staff as they come on board into uh, the core curriculum and the kind of things that, that are critical to the program's success. With the preschool program, we're now heading into our second year. And so I think there's a similar process at work. And so my hope is that again, if we're three or four years from now, Healthy U is so embedded in the YMCA's preschool child care program that it's just part of who it is, who we are and what it is we do. The school program is really gonna be the one where we're gonna have to pay a lot of attention to this because our goal is the same, that we don't want a one or two year pop here. We want to really fundamentally change the way schools relate to kids around nutrition, healthy eating, exercise, family engagement. And I think if we continue to keep Horizon engaged, and at this point, I think they're thrilled with the program, I remain very optimistic that 
we're going to be able to continue to grow the program moving forward and that we are going to continue to achieve the kind of success as measured in our evaluation that we're seeing so far. And that certainly gives all of us uh, on the leadership team that worked at this a great energy and great commitment because we're seeing the impact that this program is having. So with that, Sue, I'll turn it back to you as, as we begin to wind the webinar up. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. We can have the next slide. Okay, so here's our training. We've done 1,600 YMCA after school directors, early child care directors, and classroom teachers and caregivers, 60 teachers and administrators through the Healthy You Wellness Team, 180 Healthy You School faculty directly trained, and then 12 PE teachers trained in fitness grants. Next. And here's just an example in the preschool environment. The top left, they're charting uh, a Go Food. This helps them identify healthy foods to eat. In the bottom chart, this week I tried a new Go Food. So we're encouraging and promoting them to choose and try out fruits and vegetables. And on the right side is an example of the healthy you. Commitment pledge. Next slide. And here we have our, one of our gardens at one of our local YMCA's. And this helps to um, show kids how foods are grown. The preschool um, curriculum helps to uh, teach. We may have lost Sue, so let me just continue on. So, um, you know, we've really tried to engage um, the schools uh, through a variety of different approaches. And again, what you're looking at are just some slides that sort of illustrate that. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, again, here are some slides showing uh, activity in action. You know, the other thing that we did, and I'll just mention this is, and I'll give Horizon a lot of credit, is that in branding the program, it just wasn't a name on a letterhead. And so every kid in all of our programs get this healthy youth shirt. And they're attractive enough that the kids wear them, and it gives broad exposure uh, throughout the state as, they, as people see these shirts and ask what's going on and why, you know, what the program is. Next slide. So this is our contact information. We've had a lot of inquiries from um, other states on the program, and in fact, uh, several northeastern states are looking at the program. Horizon is very committed to it and is always willing to uh, also have interaction with people interested in it. And so uh, if you're on the webinar and you'd like more information from us directly, we're more than glad to help, and uh, you have our contact information here as well as some online resources. Next slide. So we just want to thank everyone uh, for their time. And Peter, I, I guess this may be a question and answer portion. And uh, and we're glad to be of any further help that we can. Yes, thanks, Bill. I'm sorry we, we did lose Sue there. We tried to get her back, but we're unsuccessful. Um, it's been a, a pleasure working with you all over the last five years. And thanks so much for sharing a lot of the lessons um, work too. I mean, it's been quite a journey and your, your passion and enthusiasm to continue that and uh, the vision to the bigger picture of what we're talking about here and creating and supporting a healthy environment for everybody. Um, it's, it's, it's just wonderful and I'm so pleased to be part of it and to be of some assistance moving forward. Uh, Bill, if I could ask you a couple of questions. Um, advice uh, to other wise or other states that are looking to do something like this? One of the pieces of advice I'd give would be to take a look at um, those funders in your state that would have a passion for kids, but also would have an interest in something that is significant in a scalable sense. And that's what really attracted Horizon to us. An individual wide doing this program 
would not have that much of an impact. And as a funder, that wasn't what their mission is. So um, th that would be one of my encouragements. The second is, especially if people are, are uh, on the webinar that are with the YMCA, I think one of the things we've learned in New Jersey, and it's really played out with Health EU, but also with some other funders and areas, is that you know if we can get our act together, and if we can act in a unified way, but I, I would say also have the discipline to execute on this, that we can really achieve um, uh, some very significant improvements in, in, in our community. And I would say that I would not want in any way to not emphasize that it, it was a lot of hard work to get 41 corporate YMCAs lined up behind the program and to hold them accountable for executing. Because ultimately, we had to have those hundreds and hundreds of staff moving this program forward in a unified way. And that, you know, my big fear was, okay, you know, we, we made these representations to Horizon and uh, we get the funding and then, you know, what happens if we fall on our face and what happens if the evaluation results show that we just have not executed on this. And so fortunately, um, through everyone's collective hard work, we were able to have this program really have an impact. And, uh, and so it shows it can be done and I think Peter, as you know, as, as other parts of the country are looking at this issue of how do we really have an impact on childhood obesity, I mean, this is one strategy that really is evidence-based and makes sense. And uh, the thing I'm probably most intrigued about, and then I'll stop, um, is is the, the, our opportunity to really achieve scalable change working in partnership with public schools. And if we can get that right, I think that we really will have an impact not just on New Jersey, but on the country as a whole. I couldn't agree more, Bill. You emphasize too, and Sue, that you know, that looking at the big picture and the ability to be flexible, uh, obviously each of these uh, communities are a little bit different. Um, how, have you, how have you gone about doing it? Um, just a couple thoughts. I'm not sure if this is where you were going to go, Peter, but you know, one of the one of the real challenges for us is that when we try and engage public school systems, first of all, we have to meet them where they are in terms of their capacity and their competence and their resources. And then it's really important that the YMCA that is working with those public schools is committed to doing whatever it takes to give the support to that public school in order to be successful. And so. In the, in the schools where I would look back now a year later and say we we uh, we didn't we didn't get a base hit we actually ground it out um, it was because the, we we just weren't able to keep that school committed and connected and moving forward and the schools where we've really hit a home run with the program it's because that local Y really worked closely with the school and we were able to make sure that we sustained the commitment. And you know the tough thing is uh, why can't hold a school accountable in the sense that we could hold a local Y accountable? So so much of this is persuasion, relationship building, and perseverance. And those have been very valuable lessons now as we begin to move into year two of the program. Well, I think it'd be fair to say too, your lessons learned in the, in the after school setting is that it does take a little bit of time. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I think that. Um, at times, it, it can, it's an issue of perseverance that um, it, that if, if the leadership of the Y is committed to the program, that eventually it will ingrain itself in the culture of the organization. Okay. Uh, Bill, I'm pretty sure you might be able to answer this one. I know it's probably more specific to Sue, but how have the parents responded to the program, whether it be after school, early childhood, or, or in the school system? I, parents have been incredibly responsive to the program, and I'll just give you one example that I think uh, is really critical, and that is that everyone is wrestling with the issue of proper nutrition for kids, but also, even more importantly, how do we engage children in a way that's appropriate to them where they begin to have a sense of ownership over what they're eating? And the, the go slow and woe formula is incredibly effective. But beyond that, what I've what we've learned is that that formula also begins to give parents tools 
that they can use working with their child around uh, the kind of choices that they need to make. And so um, we're, we're making progress with parents around the kind of choices that they're making. And then I think what we're learning is if we can do that, and then if we can do some things like a lot, we're really now getting very engaged in community gardens, many located at local schools, and kids are, and parents are able to participate in that and connect what they're reading to the to the growing process. Um, I, you know, let me just say this and then I'll, I'll stop, which is that, you know, there's there's this school of thought out there around childhood obesity that uh, it's all a matter of personal choice and th that if if today's parents were better parents that we wouldn't have a problem. And what I would say is I think that's a lot of nonsense that today's parents care passionately about the health of their kids. They are wrestling with societal and environmental changes that I never had to deal with when I was raising my kids. And they are looking for tools and support and environmental and policy things that allows them to make the healthy choice the easy choice. And um, so, um, you know, I, I think that this program is really a very, very positive step forward and has fundamentally changed relationship that the YMCA has with its parents that we really now are not just providers of after school care or preschool. We are their partners in raising a, a healthy children. Thanks, Bill. Um, I've got a couple of quick questions here from the from uh, our, uh, our our listeners. Um, quick question. Sue mentioned a MOU. Could you say, describe a little bit what is that and what does it look like uh, in your system? So there are a couple kinds of MOUs. One is that, that the New Jersey YMCA Alliance actually has our local YMCA sign MOUs that stipulate uh, the, the responsibility of the local YMCA to the program. And that deals with everything from the branding of Healthy You to the kind of evaluation processes that they have to agree to, to the training that they need to make available for their staff. But it formalizes it so that there's a real sense of commitment. I mean, we're committing along with Horizon to providing technical assistance and um, equipment and ongoing training and evaluation uh, um, processes, but that the Y has an obligation to. And and then the other MOU we, we have is with the local school. And again, it, it talks about the kind of ob obligations and responsibilities that the local school has. And, you know, from our point of view, it really helps to commit both everybody to the importance of the project and, and really spells out what it is that we're all agreeing to do in order to have an impact on the kids. So we'd be glad to share those too if anyone wants to send us an email. Great. There's a question on uh, some more nutrition materials were available. I could just say at the moment is we're always working to, uh, to uh, test and develop new materials that, that work. So that's a process, um, it, you know, it, as we move forward. I can't say exactly when and uh, where or what that's going to look like, but we're, that's ongoing. Um, and also someone asked a question about grids. Now these are that's a, a teaching strategy that we use for uh, engaging large groups in small areas. Now those cards are in each of the activity boxes in the formation section. Um, if you don't have those cards, please feel free to contact me and I'll I'll direct you to, to that resource. Uh, Bill, I believe uh, you had a, a wonderful uh, uh, general assembly last week and uh, something special happened there. Would you mind, can I ask you to brag on yourselves a little bit? Well, yes, yeah, thank you and thanks for, for raising that. Um, last week in Philadelphia, Wine State staff and volunteers from across the United States gathered over 4,000 in Philadelphia and the YMCA of the USA made a decision to uh, lift up three different programs that were run in YMCA's across the country. And one of the three selected was the Healthy Youth Program. And so we received a national recognition last Thursday evening. And uh, they produced a really neat video and we had representatives from Verizon there, which was wonderful for us because it really lifted them up in front of the entire country. And, uh, and obviously it also lifted up the CATCH program and we were really glad to be part of that 
because uh, obviously we have very strong feelings and see you all as our partners as we continue to move this forward. Well, that uh, brings us to the end of the webinar and Bill and Sue, thank you so much for the, for the time and sharing uh, what you have learned over the years, what's working, what hasn't worked, and your vision uh, for the future. It's clear, the data you collected, you, you're, you're making a difference uh, in the early childhood setting, in the school setting, and after school setting. Um, I, I just say, let the journey continue. Congratulations. We're with you. Thanks for having us on. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Sue. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll be back in touch uh, with the next few weeks with our next webinar, which will be at the end of August. I'm sorry I can't tell you who our special guests are at this stage, but they will be special. Thanks so much. <laughs>